Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we come to the final video in the Unity Bundle series because we come to the final day in the Unity Bundle series. And I know if you're not a Unity developer, bear with me, we are at the end. It's just when there's such a good deal covered, I have to cover these assets in some kind of depth. And today we're going to look at basically the best of the rest, the other things that you guys have requested. So again, there is... As of the time I'm recording this, 21 minutes and one day left. So by the time this is up, we basically have 24 hours remaining in both bundles. Now, the thing is, two weeks ago, this bundle, the Fantasy Bundle, was set to end, and they extended it for two weeks. Now, I think they just did that so that they could have both bundles running at the same time, but there is the outside chance the Unity FPS bundle could get extended. Don't bet on it. Do not count on it. So if you want to pick something up, I would recommend doing so. So the FPS bundle, uh, this one, we covered all of the models in it. We've already covered the UFPS kit uh, and uh, Seascape. Uh, and again, a few of the other assets here. Today, what we're going to look at is some of the AI stuff, uh, as well as the Ju um, TPS. And then we've also got the uh, Honor, the RV stuff here for uh, artificial intelligence. We're going to look at impact very quickly in the sensor toolkit. Um, so we're going to run through this stuff very, very quick, like one or two minutes a piece. Uh, this one again ends theoretically in one day, um, literally 24 hours left, but this one possibly could get extended for two weeks like the fantasy one one, but this one is done. Finito finished one day's time left. Uh, the big thing here is probably Odin, which I did cover, but I also covered bakery, RPG builder, um, Node Canvas, Octave 3D. So if you want to check any of those videos out, I covered all of the 3D models. Checked out UMORPG, um, the Low Polygon Toolkit. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing anything more about this bundle, I pretty much covered most of the big stuff. But the one that people were most excited about is probably Odin, or if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you need a light mapper or light baker, uh, bakery. All right, so that is that. Let us now uh, jump in and take a look at what we've got left. So this first one is uh, the sensor toolkit. Now sensors are pretty important in the world of game development because they are your um, game codes, eyes and ears into the world. And here you can see kind of a stealth um, game version. So see there, we have a, a camera in various different states of detection. You can see the detection cone. And then we've got uh, AI bot kind of coming down and trying to find us. So we, we snuck past the camera, we got around the bot. We have another camera right here. So if I go into the camera's frustum and it detects me, it should, there we go, trigger an alarm. So that's what sensors are all about. So if you've got things like cameras or if you have uh, so now we got all these guys on like a seek and destroy type mission to come and get me. Um, those are the things that control, you know, the enemies, what they can see, the cameras, what they trigger. Uh, doors, you notice the doors opened automatically as I walked through them. Well, all of those things are controlled by sensors. You're going to notice each one of these is basically being run. We've got object sensors in place and we've got a number of different scripts uh, for handling all the things that you saw in action. So we've got that. Uh, we've got, uh, so the player, for example... Uh, has a ton of scripts attached to them for interactive world. We've got things like line of sight being handled by this one. The security cameras obviously are being handled by a security camera. Uh, you've got coordination between teams via team membership scripts. Uh, you have some managers that are, are handling it all. Uh, so these are your various different alarms. And you'll notice there's a number of waypoints that those systems use. So for example, I go check out one of these guards. You will find a guard has a patrol script that uses steering, and then you will see it is using a set of waypoints for controlling where it should go. But obviously, once it detected us, uh, off it went. So that is kind of the basics of what... Okay, I don't know why my screen just cut out for a second. But that is the basics of what uh, the sensor toolkit is all about. Now, we've got a couple of them, uh, things along that line. Another one in the kit, or in this... Uh, this version is Polarith. Same kind of concept. I actually find this one a little bit less intuitive. Let me just open up the 2D examples. Actually, I'm not sure that this 2D example actually works right now. This one is showing kind of what the scripts are all about in terms of um, you've got flocking behavior for the fish and they kind of do their fish thing. But you're going to notice we've got the red predator fish comes in and they know to just get the heck out of Dodge when there is a predator around. This is another AI driver uh, controlling the behavior of the fish. This guy is pretty dumb in what he does. He's not chasing them down, but these fish all know to basically avoid the apex predator in the mix. And you're going to find, again, they're all being controlled by a number of different scripts. 
I find this one a little bit more confusing. Uh, there's a ton more like sensors and sensor setups. Um, and the terminology was less intuitive to me. It all works along the lines of uh, rigid body controllers and such. So your game has to work along those lines as well. The one nice thing you will find though, is there are an absolute ton of examples here for you to, to check out. So for example, uh, yeah, let's look at this aircraft one. An aircraft flying through a town. And you can see again, it's following uh, uh, areas in the town, but what it's doing is it's using uh, Polaris, various different things. So you see here the uh, collision around it, it, it's sensing danger. So it's not going to hit things. And what it ultimately doing, so it's following a path of waypoints here, but it, what it's trying to do is get to uh, an end goal, which is the fire right here. But you're seeing it's using a variety of different sensors. You can see how those sensors are triggering in terms of which way to go, where to avoid and so on. Um, it's to, to control the path of the flight. There's a number of different things like this. And again, you're gonna find, so here's the aircraft. Uh, it is, expand that one down, got AI attached to it. And it's got a number of different scripts controlling uh, things like hitting things of danger, seeking something of interest. Um, it's got steering controllers and so on. Again, I found this one a little bit less intuitive. Um, but you may not. It, it, the nice thing is if you buy the bundle, you got your choice of AI controllers, and they kind of ultimately do the same thing or try to accomplish the same tasks. Uh, so that was those two. Then the next one we're getting into is the RV stuff. Now this was confusing at first because this is actually listed as two products. We have uh, RV Smart AI and RV Honor AI. And it's like, what the heck do they do? And the funny thing is if you go into the documentation for this one, you actually get the documentation for this one. So basically think of this as one product. And what it is, is this is uh, an artificial intelligence system that is built on this toolkit. So if you want to work at a lower level, you use Smart AI, but Honor AI is basically this made easier to use. So we're going to check out the Honor AI examples. Uh, so that is under Honor AI examples, uh, scenes, and let's see. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. So you can see what it's used for by seeing, we got a number of different spawners. We got um, red and blue, yeah, so blue cubes and red cubes being spawned of two different types. Some of them have weapons, some of them do not. And we will see what they do. Well, what they do is they, they fight and try to kill each other. So this is the kind of stuff that the AI system is for. And this is something that you're going to need in your game. So you're seeing they're navigating the environment so they're going around problem pots in the environment. The guys with the weapons, the little guys with the, uh, the little black sticks there, they know to shoot, whereas the other ones go more into melee combat and then eventually start dying off. Um, so that is what is ultimately being controlled here with this guy. There are some tools here so you can analyze and so on. Now, the cool thing here is the graphs. We'll get to that in just a second, but this is all controlled via graphs. The behavior of each one of these characters is being controlled via a graph. So I'm going to stop this guy right here and you're going to see. So now I got to find, I think they're under prefabs. Here, I'll do this one. Cube spawner spawns the cubes. All right. So here's the shooting cube. So here you can see the, uh, you know, these are the murderers in our scene here. You're going to notice there's a character script attached to it. And here's where you, you would apply general things like health and so on, attributes attached to it. Um, and then you're going to notice uh, we've got some other things going on here. But the key thing here is you've got your uh, AI controlling it. And ultimately it is being controlled uh, by, where did it go? AI over here, this graph. So let's open up a graph and take a look. So the graphs, oh, that's not how I want it open. Come on, open up. Oh, okay, I gotta do it this way. RV Smart AI, or Honor AI, uh, open, you know, Smart AI, open graph. There we go. So here you can see, this is how Smart AI and Honor AI drive their character. So you can see here, it's a visual flow chart of handling things. So running away, fight or flight, following decision trees and so on. So you have the logic, do I have a ranged weapon? If I'm gonna, if I do, then shoot it. If I don't, then let's do melee combat. And then you break down, there's there's more detail there. The uh, shooting combat, combat is also controlled by another graph of nodes. So this is how the artificial intelligence logic is being built in your scene. You can see another view of it over here in the hierarchy. Um, pretty cool stuff. You're also gonna notice some, um, when I have one of these 
set. There's a number of variables you can set to go with the AI graphs, but that is kind of the heart of both the RV Honor and the smart AI systems. And you can see here, you've got tools for creating the managers, creating characters and, and so on and so forth to work with it. But the heart of it again is these graphs, which again, select a graph, go over here, open the graph up and you can click here anytime you can create the various different nodes to go in the graph or the same thing you can um, create them this way you got control over the, the values and so on so if you don't want to get into hard coding your ai logic that's where honor can really show or rv smart ai and rv honor can really shine again rv honor is built on top of rv smart ai our smart ai is what you know is the tools for creating those logic graphs and so on and then rv honor is more top level character spawners, character creation. It, it's more uh, ready to just drop into your game world. So those are the RV nodes there. So if you're looking to add AI to your game, could be a nice way to work. Uh, we already looked at Sensor Toolkit. We looked at Polarith. Uh, next up, we're gonna look at Impact. This one's actually kind of neat. Uh, this is, if you saw the UFPS example earlier on, um, that covers this as well. So if you're all in on that, you're not going to want to use this one, but this one, it basically allows you to do, uh, environmental effects based off of, yeah, let me zoom that out a bit so you can see the full details. You can do, um, audio effects based off of interactions. So, uh, I can press this button here. I think it's, so there's particles in the, but if I go, so here is a, Where's my gun? Yeah. So watch when I hit the ground, hit the metal. You're noticing different interaction. Same thing for my own footsteps. When I, here, let me turn my speaker up. When you walk over something, you get the corresponding interaction. So same thing with other surfaces over here. You get the interaction in terms of the divot marks being made and notice different sounds based off the kind of material. And this is also true for walking. So over here, we got different surface types and each one of these is giving us a different audio effect. So that is what this one is all about. Pretty straightforward on the whole. It's also fairly simple to use. So example, let's go in the world. Uh, which one did I want? Uh, physics objects, metal pipe. So here you can see the metal pipe. Remember when we tinged off of it, it made certain noises and so on. So it's an impact, impact material right here. So you can see, you can set up things like uh, how it works, what sound it will make, if it will create sparks or dust, how bullets impact with it. And that's how you define the various different surfaces in your world. So you can set up what, what sound would actually play on an interaction, what particle system should play on an interaction, uh, how it should sound and so on and so forth. So that's what impact is all about. And then we've got the final example here and it is called Jew TPS controller, but apparently that stands for Julie Helico. <laughs> um, yeah, Jill Hiko TPS controller. And what you see here is this is sort of like the uh, FPS one, but this is sort of a framework for creating a game. And you can see here, um, the third person shooter style, let me turn the sound down because you don't really need that. But it's, it's actually implementing some of what Impact just did. So when I go over these surfaces, we got different footprint sounds. So over hard rock, and then I think this last one's like a grass. So it implements the audio, it implements the character controller we see in action here. Uh, the physics going on, we've got, I think, four kinds of weapon systems in place. So I could come over here. This is really finicky though. So um, I just wanna, is it F? All right, so I can pick up a weapon and then, oops. Uh, how do I switch to the weapon? It was like F1 or F2. It's very not intuitive, but there's a way to switch to a gun using your mouth and mouse and keyboard. Uh, but then we got, so it's got shooting controls with five different sets of shooting. And then probably most interesting is that we have um, vehicle controllers in here as well. So we've got uh, one for motorcycles and I'll, I'll showcase that. And I'll showcase some of the physics at the same time because I can. So 
whoa, it's uh, it's very, let's say, um, uh, cyberpunk levels of twitchy to start. So you see here, we got vehicle physics controller, and boom. So uh, that is the uh, J2PS or JUTPS kit. You can see here, it comes with a number of things. You've got a character controller. Uh, for the various different uh, things, in, so driving, cameras, so on and so forth. Um, then you've got, again, vehicle handling, all kind of built in. So it, it's implemented as an absolute ton of scripts. Uh, also got some uh, things to get you started creating things like weapons for your world. Again, there's four or five different weapon modes. We've got um, game manager systems in place here for hooking up. Uh, again, the event system, input handling, um, all the various different UI functionality, HUDs, and so on. So it's basically the framework for a third-person perspective style of game. And that is the final asset we are going to be looking at today. And that pretty much covers off the end of the assets. So you see here, uh, that is the TPS or the first-person shooter bundle here. Uh, a few things we didn't cover. We didn't cover the character movement fundamentals, the highlight plus, the multiplayer shooter template. So there's definitely more in this, the pro, to, pro tool tips. Uh, but we covered the vast majority. And then over here, again, this one ends within 24 hours as well. By the way, if you buy either of them using my link, you have the option of spending some of the money to support Game from Scratch. And if you do that, thank you so much. It helps a ton. I hope you found these videos useful or informative. I know today I'm skimming. Uh, I'm trying to get you know the last of the stuff out to let you know. Uh, if the first person shooter kit is for you, again, this one is 100% going to end today. Whereas this one possibly could get extended for two weeks, but I expect it to end in 24 hours as well. I expect they extended this one for two weeks so that it ran the same duration as this one. But if this one follows the same pattern as the fantasy, there might be two more weeks available, but I would not... Um, bet the bet the house on that one and from my experience from actually reviewing things i think the things that impressed me the most this one seemed a little janky to be honest but some of the character models were really good apparently these two games these world war one games are actually pretty fun i like this i liked the seascape for sure uh, the the weapons pack was actually quite nice too things like tool tips and character outlines are just universally useful depending like it doesn't matter what kind of game you're creating uh, those are just things you need to use uh, this one by the way requires photon so if you're doing networking with photon this could be a nice setup for you sensor toolkit definitely useful stuff there i can see the graph based ai being useful as well um, and I actually, I did like what I saw about the third person shooter and vehicle system. And we move on over to the fantasy one. By far the star is Odin. It allows you to make, uh, tools in Unity super, super easily. RPG Builder was pretty impressive. Bakery was pretty impressive, but unfortunately NVIDIA only. Node Canvas was a nice way of putting some of your logic into grasp, but without going all in on something like, um... Bolt or, or another visual programming language. This is for mostly making like state machines, finite trees, and dialogue trees, behavior trees, and so on. This one here, I really like. It gives you, it's more or less a snapping toolkit for creating games out of module assets. Definitely a time saver if you are using any of these 3D modular packs. Um, and then the graphic stuff is all quite nice as well. This one is more of a reference, kind of a, here's how you could create an MMO, now modify our code to make your own kind of thing out of it. This one is a mess. Uh, and uh, low poly tools, I actually don't remember. Oh yeah, this was four or five plugins all in one. Things like low polygon terrain tools, water tools, and so on. If you're going for that low polygon art aesthetic, that one is actually pretty nice. So that is the end of the bundle. If you haven't picked it up already, you have one day left. It's an amazing deal, 25 bucks a piece. And you really are getting like $2,500 Canadian. So $2,000 US worth of assets on that one. And what are they saying here? 1400 US. So it actually, it's funny. The, um, the fantasy one is definitely the bigger value. But that's because some of the individual assets, like RPG Builder is normally 175 bucks, And I believe another one down here, the, uh, the low polygon is also 175 So you got a couple of definitely more expensive assets in there. And then, mind you, in this one here, the um, this character pack is 250 bucks. So they do add up for sure. Also, in the uh, fantasy one, uh, you're getting a couple of games as well. Waking and um, 
Minute of Islands. Those are those are games, actually. So if you're in it just for the games, hey, you need a couple games as well. So that is the end of the bundles, end of the bundle coverage. The next bundle you will probably hear about is going to be on uh, the next Tuesday when... Oh, actually, is it the next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday uh, when it's Unreal instead for a change. So I know some of you are really sick about hearing about Unity. The good news is the bundle's over. Uh, bad news is the bundle's almost over. So you got 24 hours left. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later and goodbye.